this week's episode of Create, Consume, Repeat, I'm taking a close look at the psychology behind our love of difficult, rage-inducing video games. As a hardcore gamer, I've endured some of the most challenging games out there, from Super Ghouls and Ghosts all the way to Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. And I can't help but wonder, why can't we put these games down? Obviously, our knee-jerk reaction is to write it off as some form of nerd masochism or Sisyphean martyrdom, but that would be wrong since that implies no progression or personal growth. And if I had to use a more accurate analogy, it would be more akin to the Wheel of Pain from Conan. So why have extremely difficult games that defy the normal rules of motivation and engagement become so popular? Maybe it's the gaming community's way of rejecting mainstream games that handhold and make gaming more accessible to a wider audience. Or maybe it's something more profound and deep-seated. I think it's the latter. Psychologists studying the conditions that transform frustration into satisfaction call the experiences sought by gamers of ultra-hard games intrinsic motivation, which is the urge to make progress towards a goal without the promise of an externalized reward. According to self-determination theory, which is one of the dominant frameworks for understanding intrinsic motivation, there are three domains in which humans experience universal psychological needs. Number one, autonomy, the urge to be the cause of one's own behavior or choices. Number two, relatedness, the urge to connect with others and identify with a group. And number three, competence, the desire to control or influence the outcome of one's behavior. Obviously, modern day video games fulfill all three of these criteria, yet it still doesn't explain why we endure the frustration of dying over and over and over again. Just wait, wait, I think I'm okay. <sighs> According to psychologist Jamie Madigan, author of Getting Gamers, tactics such as providing fun, positive feedback loops, instant replays of grisly deaths, quick restarts after failure, and keeping the goal in the player's sight at all times help players maintain an engaged flow state, despite all the setbacks. Now, I don't know about you, but that still doesn't fully explain why ultra-hard controller-throwing games like Ninja Gaiden or Dark Souls keep us trapped in this moment endlessly. Of course, intrinsic motivation is only one theory that tries to explain our love of hard games. Another theory by computer scientist Paul Schrader affirms that fun has nothing to do with it. In fact, he claims that our brains are designed to be very complex, constraint satisfaction machines. To Schrader, a person playing Dark Souls isn't motivated by the pleasure to do something successfully. Instead, it has more to do with the autonomy of setting a personal goal and achieving said goal in his own way. <sighs> Schrader claims that dopamine acts as a monitoring molecule for maintaining competence in goal-seeking behavior. So where a player may experience a dopamine hit for beating a difficult level, he gets the same dopamine hit if he screws up because it causes our brain to switch out one tactic for another in order to maintain competence in pursuit of a goal. This would explain why death is no longer frustrating, but in fact, liberating. It allows our brain to see possibilities that we wouldn't have seen before. I live, I die, I live again. Schrader's theory that our brains are problem-solving machines that thrive on adversity makes sense and aligns with theories found in the book Actionable Gamification. In his book, Cho examines the ability to utilize our creativity and immediately try again and again to see the final outcome. He contends people are by nature creative beings that love to imagine, invent, and create during play, and this inventiveness can be seen in all effective game design, including frustratingly hard games. I'd buy that for a dollar. We're at the end of yet another episode. And if you like what you saw, please smash that subscribe button and help me get to the coveted 100 subscriber milestone. It would mean the world to me.